so tonight, again, we're going to talk about the categories to avoid. Um, we're going to talk about products with high risks um, that have a high rate of returns. We're going to talk about products that have high failure rates, um, things that break down that then get returns. Um, we're going to talk about products that have higher shipping rates. Um, they have higher storage rates because they're at odd size or they're too big to store, and so Amazon charges you more money to have them there. We're going to talk about products with low profitability. We're going to talk about products that have low demand. We're going to talk about products that have too much competition or don't have enough competition. So we're going to talk about all those things. So those are the things we're going to cover tonight. Um, with millions and millions of people and millions of products being sold on Amazon, trying to figure out a product is probably pretty overwhelming. And I hear a lot of that from a lot of people, how overwhelming it is to, to find a product. So, you know, when you're out there, you're going to run into uh, situations that you're not going to expect, and they're going to catch you off guard. And tonight, what it's about is eliminating some of those things. So what we're going to try to do is to show you how to save some time um, by looking at a page and knowing that this is not a product that I would buy. This is not a product that I would sell. And, and, and I, can, I can scan a page and eliminate 20 things that I wouldn't even look at, um, especially if you're using, um, once you use, if you're using, uh, the top 100 analyzer and you get in there and you get to your preview and you see all the products I can scan down almost do them instantaneously no 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 and I use this exact same process when I'm looking so what I hope tonight happens and my goal is is to alleviate some of the fears that you're having about picking a product and actually getting and making it easier and making the time go quicker so there's no hard and fast rules to this guys all this stuff is kind of subjective, and some of it is by touch and feel. And but how you get that, and if you'll continue to look at my documents and you listen and listen from other people, but you're just trying to find a product that you can eliminate as many things that are have a possible risk and put you in the best possible light to be able to buy a product. Because for many of you, when you're getting started, you have a certain limited amount of budget, even if it's five thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars. Well, if you have over ten thousand dollars or really between 7,500 and 10, I've got some options I'll share with you at the end that could absolutely change the way in which you're doing business. So, so if you have $2,000, $3,000 and you're getting started in your business, you can't afford to pick the wrong product the first time. Now, my strategy allows for you a little bit of risk and a little bit of ways in which you can avoid some of that by not getting your first product from Alibaba. So, you know, but however you get it, you don't want to, actually search products and then decide to buy a product that you know has some high risk that you can't see you can't afford uh, common mistakes or things that you know you could avoid and we'll talk about how some of them are pretty obvious and how some of them are so by this way you're gonna be able to eliminate these products and uh, and be able to make yourself at a position where your odds are better um, so you shouldn't pick products that have these unnecessary risks and I, what I want to do is give you as many added advantages as you can to win. I want to give you everything on your side. So when you make a call and you invest your money that you've been saving or you've borrowed or whatever it is to get started, I want to make sure you have every advantage on the table that you possibly can have so that you're not setting yourself up before you get there. So first, let's talk about the categories or things you can't sell. Um, Amazon says if you sell restricted products, they can immediately suspend or terminate your selling privileges and destroy the inventory in their fulfillment centers without reimbursement. So Amazon will take your product, go burn it, and you're never getting it back. You lose everything if you sent them something that is in their restricted area um, and something you're not allowed to do. So why don't we just go to the Amazon page and we'll go through these and we'll talk about them a little bit and, uh, and then we'll be able to share. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. So Amazon has a bunch of restricted categories and a bunch of places um, that you cannot, you cannot sell on. Um, so here's some of these things that you absolutely are not allowed to uh, sell on or do anything like that. I'm, I'm trying to pull this up here. All right, so let's talk about these, the, the, the categories that you, you, you can't sell on, and, and these aren't actually all in here but so here's the things that, that Amazon says hey you know what we're gonna sell these and you can't sell them so 
unlimited instant videos, you, you can't sell those. You can't sell MP3s or the cloud player. Um, you can't sell Amazon Cloud Drive. You can't sell apps um, for the store on for Android. You can't sell Kindle or Kindle eBooks or e-readers. Uh, the Kindle Fire tablet you can't sell. Amazon Fire tablet and and so those are some of the things you can't sell in because they're just theirs. Um, now let's talk about the products that you're you're, you're that are that you can't and you can't sell stuff in. So some of these are pretty interesting if you'll see here. Um, so right here is where we go. And so alcohol is one of them. So let's press on alcohol. So Amazon now sells wine. So, but you have to be really approved to sell wine. If you don't have a winery, you're probably not gonna sell wine on Amazon. But outside of that, um, if you have a food product that has some alcohol in it, you can see, let me make this a little bigger for everybody. That's a little better. So alcohol, wine, uh, beer making kits, they're all right. Uh, alcohol related products. So if you're buying like corkscrews and it says decanters and things like that, alcohol memorabilia is okay, but you can't sell alcohol. You can't sell liquor. You can't go down to the... The, the liquor store and put up some bottles of vodka and start selling it. So can't do that. Um, in some states, you have alcoholic beverage licenses. Um, you have some alcoholic beverage licenses that you can't sell. So that is another thing that uh, you can't sell. So that's the alcohol area. So if you're planning on being into the alcohol part of this or want to be an alcohol business, you need to, first of all, I wouldn't suggest you do that anyway because that's not a great business, I can tell you. It's very hard. Let's talk about animal products. <laughs> now, there are some strange things that I think they let you sell on Amazon that are kind of odd to me, but they'll let you sell some live plants. They'll let you sell insects and worms. So you can buy crickets on there. And there's this guy that's selling crickets right now, and he is crushing it. This guy figured out how to get these crickets, I think, uh, sent from another country, but he actually sells crickets. Now, they don't take them into the warehouse. Imagine that. Imagine if all his crickets got out of FBA. But he fulfills it by merchant, and he sells crickets. Uh, you can sell live cr uh, shellfish. Um, you know, you can sell bait. You can sell all kinds of things like that. Um, but here's where the issue comes in, okay? You can't sell live creatures. You can't sell pets and livestock or mammals. You can't sell cheetahs and jaguars, you know? You can't sell their fur or feathers. You can't do that. Um, you can't sell parts of cats and dogs. So if, if you have a restaurant and you're trying to get some cats and dog parts, you cannot get them from Amazon. Um, you can't sell parts of whales or dolphins. You know, some of this is just silliness that you probably know. But I, I, liked, I looked at it earlier and I thought some of these are hilarious. You can't sell shark fin products or whale meat or shark liver oil. So if you're planning on selling, if some of you have chosen and you found someplace else, you found shark liver oil, you're not going to sell it not, and not get your deal. Fine art and home decor art, uh, basically they're pretty simple. Uh, you, you can sell one-of-a-kind paintings. So if you want to paint your own paintings and put them up there in drawings, you can certainly sell that. Uh, you can print limited edition stuff you can sell. Um, you can take the only work of edition you can sell. You can sell prints if they're numbered and signed. Um, so, but here's the things you can't sell. You can't sell artwork without a name listed. You can't sell artwork that's mass produced or commercial work that has been hand painted called brush the canvas. Uh, you can't sell gilkey, which is like when you have a canvas and you just paint uh, stuff on it. So uh, promotional posters and advertisements that don't meet the requirements above. So, you know, I don't think anybody here is probably typically wanting to build their own art. If you are, you're probably at the wrong webinar. Uh, the same with art and decor. Home autom or automotive, um, here's some things. If you want to go in the catalytic converter business or uh, high-intensity discharge conversion kits, uh, tires and batteries, now you have to ship those yourself. I don't, I don't, believe, I don't believe they're going to take uh, Amazon or batteries inside of Amazon. Um, so here, I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, you can't, like, one of the things that Amazon's real big about is not breaking the rules. So they're not going to let you have cell jammers or GPS jammers or laser jammers or PC jammers or radar, uh, Wi-Fi jammers. They're not going to give you things that you can kind of go out and act uh, 
subversive or undercover. Uh, in another part, they won't let you. They won't let you get video cameras that have audio on it. Now I don't know how they're not catching selling a camera like I have right now, but technically they're not supposed to sell you security cameras that have uh, audio with them. And I'll we'll see that in a minute. So. So I don't know how many of you want to get into the parts business. Um, the problem with parts is one of the things I don't suggest is don't get yourself into pieces and parts of other people's manufactured equipment because you're competing with the guy who sells it, and that makes it much harder. Um, clothing, um, and, and some of these aren't actually, they're, they're gated, but drugs and drug paraphernalia, uh, you know, you can do uh, drugs approved for over-the-counter purchase that are not prohibited by Amazon policies. Uh, there's obviously a lot of dietary supplements, but you got to meet their requirements. Um, but so here's some of the things you can't sell: um, synthetic can cannabinoids, which are basically uh, um, they synthetically make uh, the the THC in marijuana and they put it in stuff and then it's chemically induced and it's not good for people and people were dying from it. Uh, you can't sell certain seeds and plants, bath salts, and not like bath salts, you really take a bath in these bath salts. You can't get in there and the bath salts, you can't go in there, the ones that they snort and get these kids all fired up. Um, but here's some of the things that really, you know, people may want to sell that you can't sell on Amazon. A lot of these things you can sell on eBay. Man, eBay will sell a lot of stuff that you can't sell, but on Amazon, it's a it's a little classier, higher place place for products, and people are willing to spend more money on Amazon anyway. So you can't sell butane honey oil extract kits, and basically what they do in, in Colorado, they're extracting all the THC out of these things, and that's what that is. You can't sell bongs and dab kits and uh, rose glass pipes or similar. You can't sell stuff to do drugs with um, nitrous oxide crackers. Um, so you can't sell derivatives of cocaine or coca leaves, um, ketamine, uh, I guess that's cat, I think that's cat-like uh, stuff. You can't, it's like cat tranquilizer or something, I don't know why. People do some crazy drugs, I don't want to. You can't sell hallucinogenic mushrooms or any mushrooms marked as hallucinogenic effects. Um, you can't sell pre prescription drugs. Um, so there's a whole list of stuff here if you want to look through it. I just thought it was neat to go in and look at you know what they were doing. You can't sell basically you can't sell bonds and things like that. So there's a lot of things that you can't sell on Amazon. Uh, electronics, we'll talk about that. Grocery and food. There's obviously some restrictions in there, but um, you can get in there. We're only talking about things you can't do. Um, you can't do gambling in a lottery. Um, you can't sell slot machines. Um, I don't know if that means you can't sell stuff in slot machines, but you can't sell lottery tickets or something like that. Um, Intellectually, intellectual property violations. And basically, this is the stuff people talk about. So you can get yourself into trouble, and that's why this is important. If you start selling counterfeit products, Amazon is very likely to be able to uh, suspend your account. You may never get it back. So if you're selling, um, we'll talk about this in the actual products to avoid, um, is that you can't sell Disney stuff that you get from China. Uh, China will print anything. There's no... No one's enforcing copyright on them there. They'll have one line out the back where they're putting Louis Vuitton purses on the other line. They're putting Louis Vuitton purses to sell for, you know, $40 like they do in New York City. Matter of fact, when I first started out, I first started buying stuff and selling stuff. I would go to New York City, and I think I was about 18 or 19 years old, and I would go get me uh, purses from uh, Chinatown, and I'd come back and sell them. So that was my first uh, uh, business in trying to buy and white label products. Well, I didn't white label. I might have told people it was for me. I went and got it. But uh, I think I, I mean, I think people knew that I was not selling a Louis Vuitton purse for a hundred bucks when they're you know six or seven hundred dollars. So uh, bootleg copies of anything, bootleg anything, software, video games. You can't copy your CDs at home and sell them on Amazon. Uh, hazardous and dangerous items. Uh, so they, they do restrict some things, and so your batteries can't contain mercury. Um, if your product has batteries with it, there's some issues that you got to deal with. Um, prohibited items, fire extinguishers, refrigerants, cleaning agents. You can't sell black powder. So if any of you guys were planning on selling black powder, you are not going to be able to do it. So you may have to go start a, a, a fireworks stand and do that. Uh, projectile flares, bacteria cultures, 
pesticides, light bulbs. So there's stuff there that you can't sell. And I know some of this is probably basic and we understand this. It's a little bit entertaining and, but some people, you know, decide that they want to sell things in these categories. And I'm not saying lots of them, but some of you will want to sell some of these things. And you're like, you just need to know right off the bat that you can. Um, how about human body parts and imperial artifacts? So listen, if any of y'all want to sell your blood, this is not the place to do it, okay? Um, what else? We talked about intellectual property, jewelry. We'll, I mean, we'll talk about that in a second. Kindle accessories. Amazon's not going to allow you to put Kindle in your ad. You can say that this product is uh, compatible with Kindle products, but you can't sell actual accessories. They control that because it's their product and they're not going to let you do that. Um, laser pointers, you can't get in that category anymore. They only let certain people because they're dangerous and people are shining them at, uh, um, shining them at, uh, airplanes. And so they limit that, um, offensive products. Let's talk about that. Um, you know, you can't promote glorified hatred. You can't do things that are uh, racial or sexual in nature. Um, you can't put crime scene photography out. So you can't take pictures of bodies and put them up there. You can't put human body parts. Uh, you know, you can't retrieve products from a disaster or tragedy and then put them up there. Video, sound recordings taken without someone's permission. So these are those things that you wouldn't think, but people probably are trying to sell pictures from, for, for you know, um, dead bodies. And so if you your business plan was to start selling pictures of crime scene photographs, you're going to have to reevaluate, okay? Uh, posted meters and stamps. You can't sell recall products. So if a product's been recalled, you can't sell it. So don't think you got a good deal on a, on, on a, a bin of something that's been discontinued and you're going to go put it up. And if you don't and they find that out, they're going to suspend your account. Uh, sex and sensuality. So they will let you sell things. And, and, and not that you can't, and they do have sex products. And that's not to say you can't get into that. Um, I don't know, about a year ago, I looked pretty heavily into some of this and spent some time in that category. And there's just so many hoops that you had to jump through. Um, there's some people making a lot of money in that category. Um, so they're not gonna let you buy stuff for like women for, uh, girls for uh, like bachelorette parties and things like that. You can find at Spencer Gifts, not a lot of that. And then of course it comes down to amateur pornography and X-rated movies and hardcore magazines, sexual health products are listed by pre-approved sellers. So you can't go out there and list um, sexual devices. I won't talk any more in depth than that. Um, you can't sell adult novelty products. And here's my favorite one that the only girl, quote, quote, that's ever been underage and been in pornography, she has her name listed on the Amazon site. There's Tracy Lords, and if you have any pornography related to Tracy before 1986, you are probably in violation of child pornography. And she has her own place on, like they said, no pornography. I don't know how, like Tracy Lords, if you're not having pornography, how they listed that. Probably the controller thought it was just funny who's writing that. Um, stolen property, you can't cook it, some stolen stuff. Surveillance equipment, I told you about that. There's some odd things in there. Tobacco or tobacco-related products. Now, I, you can sell ashtrays and cigarette cutters and hookahs and humidors and lighters. Now, I don't know how they let people get hookahs, but you won't let them get bongs. You know, I mean, it's just those things. that Amazon, like I said, has some oddity things that they're not as, um, you know, you don't know really why they're doing it. Uh, collectibles that do not contain tobacco. So basically you can't sell blunt wrappers and cigarettes and cigars. You just can't sell. Now, they also aren't letting people sell e-cigarettes or e-hookahs or e-electronic pipes or cigars. Now, if you're in that business, now listen, I'm not saying there's a lot of, there was, I think that rush is over. It's kind of like grill gloves on, on Amazon, but this electronic cigarette thing was very, I almost opened up a retail store and did an online store too. I actually had um, had the money in my hand and was getting ready to do it because I had some extra space in one of my buildings and I'm like, I can put this in. Well, literally uh, around that business, there are now three within a hundred yards and there's another eight open in town because everybody ran towards that, but you can't sell them on um, Amazon. So you can't sell dip and things like that. I think that's drug paraphernalia. We talked about that earlier. Can't sell weapons. You can't sell weapons. Okay. 
Um, now there are some weapons you can sell. So if you're thinking about, I mean, some of them, and if you sell weapons, the, the uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms are not going to let you get toy guns. Uh, if they look anything like a real gun, airsoft guns are clear, have to be marked uh, that they are air spring driven. They can't say they look like a gun. So you don't, they don't want people out getting killed and then blaming them. BB guns, uh, they have to be marked that they are air powered and that's what they are. Um, you can't, you can, you can't, certain gun parts you can sell, uh, but you can't sell things. What they're worried about is uh, parts that you, um, that you may be able to do something with another gun. Um, paintball accessories, uh, the airsoft barrels, and I don't know, but I'm thinking somehow you may be able to adapt those barrels. I don't know why they wouldn't let you sell the barrels or the, the airsoft magazines. I don't know what that means. It doesn't make sense. Uh, certain knives and swords, hunting knives, kitchen knives, um, I guess are okay. I'm trying to make sure. Yeah, those are all okay. Yeah, I know that because I've got kitchen knives. Uh, Replica swords you can, machetes, throwing spears and knives, uh, crossbows and hankers. So there, there's a lot of stuff you can sell. Slingshots. <laughs> like why they're selling those and they won't sell other things, I don't know. Um, and you can sell pepper spray. That seems like that's a smart thing. I wonder if they allow that in. The, I don't know if they – does anybody know if they allow you to um, fulfill by merchant pepper spray? That would seem something that would be bad to have in a, in a warehouse. Uh, guns, antique guns are not going to let you, or they're going to let you sell. Oh, I'm sorry. That was right. That's what I thought. I got costed there. I moved too fast. Examples of prohibited items. These are, and you'll see starter guns, zip guns, black powder, ammunition. They'll let you sell, uh, they'll let you sell like the cases that you can put stuff in, but that's it. All right. So those are the products that you cannot absolutely sell. Um, and it gives you some ideas. I hope that was helpful for some of you. If any of you guys were talking about doing that. So here is the products that um, you are pre that you can sell, but you have to get pre-approval to be in them. So you have to have it ungated. Now I'm not going to tell you that it's really really hard, and I'm going to do a video. Uh, some webinar stuff about how to get ungated in these categories later. But here's my thought process in that. If you're just getting started, let's not try to jump through extra hoops. You already have enough stuff to learn. Why add the fact that you've got to sell something in one of these categories? There's enough other products out there that you can sell that don't put you in a place where you have to jump through an extra hoop. Remember when you're getting started is to keep it simple. Don't get yourself 80 new things. Now, if you've been selling and you're on your second product, I would suggest maybe even do two products or on your third product, then try to maybe open one of these categories. Now, if you're just dead set and you want to be in health and beauty, man, then go ahead. And I'll, I'll let you see some of the things that they ask for for this. Um, so 3D design. So people are using uh, 3D printers. And so 3D printers now, um, you can make products with them so but they're typically for display and I, I read it and they're for display and you can make them and they have to be new only uh, automotive and power sports um, so you can have them and they can be refurbished and collectible uh, new and used so you uh, you can do tires and wheels for all vehicle types so you can have tires and wheels um, I don't know again that's not something that's too big for me I don't know if you can actually I wonder if anybody knows if you can have tires uh, stored at the warehouse. It would make sense that they probably would do tires, but if not, you may have to send that fulfilled by merchant. Um, so beauty, and that's a category a lot of people want to get in. So let's go look at the So there's the requirements for it. You must be an Amazon Pro merchant, which you have to be anyway. You must be able to provide acceptable documentation and information we request about those products you intend to do. After your request, approval, and beauty counter, we will contact you with additional information. Um, so to get in beauty, they, I think one of the things, I don't think they require it, but they would love to see a website. You have to be able to show them that the products that you're getting aren't going to hurt people or harm people. Um, so that's some of the stuff. So, you know, bath gel, it's stuff that you touch yourself with on your body, like on the outside, makeup and things like that. Now, as long as you can get the documentation or where it comes from and how it's done, then that's okay to do. Uh, clothing and accessories. Hey, you know. There's a lot of things that you can make money on clothing and accessories. Now, one of my things about clothing and accessories, I'm sorry, guys. 
is one of my big problems with clothing and accessories is that is that you um, you have to go in two different directions so if you buy a product you may have to go in three you may have to go sizes and colors and then on all those categories you have to go up so you have to go horizontal and vertical well why put yourself in the first time you get something where you got to buy one product and you got to buy small medium large so now you almost have to triple the amount of product that you get so don't get yourself into a small medium large or red white and blue color combination so you want to keep that product as you know flat as you can so you just buy and you go vertical and not horizontal so if you're doing horizontal horizontal buying you know what if you buy you, you buy equal amounts of small, medium, and large, and you don't know how much you do, and so you waste half your inventory, and you run out of medium, and still got a hundred smalls. So if that makes any sense, that's just some of the things in my strategy. And by the way, all of these things you can do, and not, and and, and and it's okay. It's not like you can't become and do these things. But I go back to: Are we trying to reduce what it is you're doing um, so that you can avoid some of these risks? when you're first starting out because if you screw it up you may not be able to get back in for a while so all your products must be authentic so i'm not i'm not going to talk about this much but basically if you need this this information's out there collectible coins listen you don't want to get yourself into products that you're not an expert in unless you're an expert in in coins um that's great but in reality if you're selling coins you're you're not doing you're not doing um, private labeling. What you're doing is basically buying stuff and selling. I think that's a different business um, model. Uh, books and collectibles. Listen, there's a lot of money out there. People are making a ton of money, and lots of RA people are doing books. But again, I might be interested in going once a week and doing RA and running around, um, you know, and finding stuff like it's a lottery, like scraping off, uh, you know scratch lottery tickets at the gas station but I'm not willing to spend all my time every week and have a part-time job to go out and try to find products so I've decided you know with the mini project we're gonna go out and anytime we're in a store we're gonna go see what's in the uh, in the clearance title um, and one of the reasons I want many to do it this way is is that's how all of you should start not one of you should start with getting some retail arbitrage products because that'll give you the opportunity to start your account that'll give you an opportunity to be able to do fulfilled by merchant That'll also give you the ability to be able to learn how to do, um, to send stuff and to do FBA so you can get some stuff in there while you're searching. So that should be on your top three that you start out with. Get my account open and I want to get something. I want to learn the process. So that may be one of those things on your three that, that week in your magic three that you're going to get up and you're going to, okay, this week I'm going to figure out how to get a product and I'm going to send it to Amazon. Or I'm just going to hold it and do a listing. So maybe do the listing first. And then put it up for sale. So now you have something on Amazon selling within the first, you know, week of you actually signing up. And now your mind tells you that you're actually in business because you are. Um, so that's what you need to do is get yourself some retail arbitrage. Uh, collectibles, again, if it needs expertness, if you have to be an expert to do it, then you probably shouldn't be doing that the first time. Don't get yourself into something that's not worth anything and he was told that it was. You can't sell gift cards for other places. Uh, grocery now there's people making money in groceries there really is but um, that's not what our business model is or it's not mine it's not what I'm trying to help people do um, health and personal care listen there's a lot of money and I'm, I'm, I'm in the moment at this moment right now I'm, I'm launching a health and beauty product and, and a line of them and they're gonna be called butterfly kisses um, and so they're all natural products um, and, and guess what I'm gonna ask you guys this help here someday soon for all you ladies out there, if you're listening, I'm going to send you free uh, beauty products, and uh, I would really appreciate if you guys will do um, some reviews for me. And uh, we'll talk about that and how important that is for everybody in my small groups and how we can absolutely kill it for each other because we're in this strong team. So that's what we do in the masterminds, and I'm going to talk about We haven't done that yet, but we're getting ready to. So I like health and beauty, but again, I don't think you should be doing that and trying to engage yourself and maybe get yourself in trouble by buying something. Uh, industrial and scientific, independent design stuff, if, you know, if you're doing jewelry. Uh, again, big category, lots of stuff, luggage and travel accessories, backpacks and briefcases and things like that, umbrellas and travel accessories. Those are all things that you have to jump through some hoops and you can't, you know, and if you don't want to jump through hoops first, shoes and handbags and sunglasses. 
sports collectibles, videos, DVDs, watches, and wine. So those are all the categories that you have to get ungated. So let me phrase this one more time to make sure it's clear. I don't think it's a problem for you to be in those categories. It's just one of those things that if you're going to add to the puzzle something that isn't um, – that you have to take more steps to do. And some of these you have to been selling for a while to even get in them. So you have to have a certain rating. Um, you have to um, have been sold so many products over a certain period of time. And you have to have a certain score and your reviews. So to get in them, it's gonna take you more time and you just don't need to jump through that hoop right now. So wait till your third product. So I'm officially saying, from my opinion, you should wait until your third product before you start getting into a um, ungated category. So that's my thought on that. So let's go to the next one. So we're going to talk about product sizes, and I'll get in this here again in a minute. But bottom line is, is my goal because a one I I teach two things. I teach to start out not with. Uh, Unless you can really find a secure, uh, a secure supplier uh, in China that you know is uh, vetted and you know that they're a legitimate company. Right now, there's a lot of people experiencing problems coming out of China because credit cards and people are taking your money. Uh, I got a story last week, and uh, my buddy in Hong Kong and he's going to actually come on here in a couple of weeks and we're going to talk about some really great stuff we got put coming up. But anyway, he told me about a story about a lady who uh, shipped her payment in and our, uh, the address of the company was on the 24th floor of such and such building. And uh, so one of his partners actually went over to the um, went over to the building and he walked inside and said, we're, you know, 24th floor, I want to see this office. And she goes, well, only our office building going goes up to 23 floors. So that's happening to people out there. So you're going to have to take your due diligence to figure out whether these companies are actually legitimate. And uh, I'm going to share with you something. If you guys are into that third product, maybe fourth product area, that could be a game changer for you. Um, and I'm trying to make it a game changer for some early people. But you, you, some of you guys are going to be really excited about seeing what I'm working on. So my product sizes that I'd like for you to have are really – well, it says 20 pounds before you get out of a standard size. So if you're putting it on a boat, 20 pounds is fine. I don't suggest putting your stuff on a boat right now. And I would say before I got to my fourth or fifth product, I would not put, I would not get a product that you want to put on a boat and wait because you're 60 days and if something screws up, you're 90 days from now. So if you're ready to start your business 90 days from now and then spend, so you're four months, the time you find a product, get a product, you're four months out before you can get it. So I suggest again, that you fourth or fifth product or your second or third order of the product you're sending um, by air. So then you can reduce your cost. So what's one of the things you should evaluate up front is does this product have the ability to drop in price dramatically if I quit sending it through the air? And imagine if you had a product that has a 35 or 40% margin in it and all of a sudden you're able to jump up 10, 15% because you're putting on a boat, that's great. But up front, we don't want to create, because here, guess what? It's another step. Another step is I got to go and figure out how to get my product on a boat and how it gets forward and how it goes through customs and does all of these things. So to step over that whole boundary just seems like it's not, it's not creating better odds for you. And better odds is to get a product, your first product, not from Alibaba. You get it from Ally Express or you find a company in America that wholesales a product. There's several wholesalers out there that, um, that have products they import from China. Listen, all you are as an Amazon seller is basically you're buying at a wholesale and you're selling at retail. Sometimes there's not enough margin, but you need to get your first experience. You need to find a product, and then if you can source it and you can get it. Now, listen, I see products all the time. The product uh, that I've, I've done several of these products in the past, and I always like to start there because – now, I'm able to be able to overcome that because I have suppliers that I use. But up front, when you get a product and you go, oh, I got to go talk to somebody in China, you can go right now, guys, this evening. You can go on Ally Express, and people are like, well, the products are more expensive. You just have to look like any place else. There's usually people in there selling them at wholesale, and you have to buy lots of 10 or 20 or 50. 
but you can buy as little as one. And how this works is you go in there and Alibaba set up like a credit. It's just like Amazon. It's like it's the Chinese Amazon for retail over there. But because products are coming from there, you can basically take them out of there. Now, some of you ask questions about how you, um, how you white label that or private label that. And um, that'll be a discussion for another deal. But I, I was able to, by my boxes and how I was able to put stickers on them, to white label it so I could you know, have a, pro a product that no one else could copy. So... That does is, is, is one of the factors. So my other factors, so we talk about product and shipping. So product units are 20 pounds or less, and that's if you're putting on a boat. But my suggestion is you've got to be under two pounds, and I really would love for it if you could be under 16 ounces. So that's, you know, that's one of those things you definitely want to avoid uh, is to get in a 20-pound product. I want you to fly them. So one to two pounds. Uh, so... Size-wise, so when you're flying stuff, the bigger it is, the more money it costs. Not just weights, it's more about volume because they're putting it on a plane. So you want a product that's about 8 by 8 by 8 If you could put it in an 8 by 8 box, great. If you have to be a little bit bigger than that, but again, the bigger that product gets, the more it costs to be shipped here. So I'm going to share with you my document, I think. Well, let's talk about this right now. So, so some products to avoid. Products with too much competition. How about that? How about grill gloves and brushes and yoga mats and the famous right now French press? The French press. Now, some of you guys are selling the French press. Man, get your inventory sold because there is literally a hundred products in the top one hundred. French press. French press. Let's go all the way to eighty. French press is still there. So, I mean, all of those carries are top 100 of just the coffee presses. And guess what? There's another 100 out there, maybe two or 300 of these out there selling. So that's too much competition. Do not and avoid that. Okay, so people press me all the time. And what's your number? How, ma how many products? So I'm going to give it to you. And I don't like doing this, and I've been thinking about it and telling people because I don't want people to be stuck at this number. That doesn't mean that you can go above it. Remember, none of these are hard and fast rules. But if I had to say, Rob, you got to give me a number, I'm going to say I don't want any more than 100 people competing with me, 125 max. I've done some 150s um, in a competitive category. And the only reason I, I – I, man, it's a competition to me. Like, I want to compete with people because on the front end, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm a better lister. I'm a better marketer. I'm better than a lot of people at what I do. So I'm not as scared to go up to 150. Guys, I would tell you this. On your first product, get yourself under 100. If there is a top 100 of just your product, that's, you know, that category is pretty competitive because guess what? You start out below 100. So when you put your, your product up, now you can see here, some of these people, they've got 111 reviews. And this guy's number 98. He has 111 reviews. This guy's got 600 reviews, and he's on number 95. So that just shows you how many you are. So if you enter this category, you're going to be on page, I mean, 200. I don't know. You're, you're, I mean, you're going to be so far back that you're going to have to spend garbage. Tony says garbage. I don't disagree. Uh, is that my Tony? Is that my Tony in Louisville? I don't know if that's it. I think it is. But, uh, oh, I maybe should have said that. Um, but people who do arbitrage, I mean, it's a hard deal. But let's get back to the coffee. You got me distracted, T. Uh, so if there's 100 products, guys, and below that, if there was only – what I would like you to see is if you look at a top 100 and a product does have 100, well, like by the time I get to this last page, I'm going to want to see stuff on this page for probably the last from the 50 up, I'm going to want to go through and I don't want to see everything that's coffee uh, French press. I want to see stuff that's not. I want to see coffee filters. I want to see percolators. I want to see coffee. I want to see things that are in that category that are not the exact same thing plus 100. Now, Look here, guys. This is number 82, and this guy's got 95 reviews. There are so many people. 85, 85, 50. This is on 184 reviews, and he's number 86. Let's look at his BSR. Man, 
his BSR, BSR, he's 24,000 in kitchen and dining, but he's 86 in home and kitchen because he's listed twice. So <laughs> he's over 80 in coffee presses and he's that he's selling that much. So again, the first time you don't want to get into products are too much. Let's talk about too little. Now it took me a second just to find this. So I went way back in and I looked at um, disposable decorating bags. So disposable decorating bags. First of all, one of the problem is, and I'll talk about that in a second, they don't meet the price criteria, which is this is nine dollars. This is six seventeen now, mate, and this is for a fifty count. So you have to sell a hundred count to get it above my number, which I'd like you to be at your sales price over ten and be making at least five to six dollars, a minimum of five dollars. Um, you, if you're doing less than that, then all of a sudden you're doing retail arbitrage. Um, you know, so look here. We go down this page, and we're already at stuff that isn't what it is. There's a kit. Hello Kitty. Uh, so bags you know and then I don't I'll bet you so now here's something that we always look for I've talked about this in the past if you have ads sponsored out of me I mean someone's selling I mean this guy's trying to sell his ads uh, that may even be the same guy no it is probably the same guy so we get on the back page and already so you see how these when you roll down so there's only three pages um, I think I looked earlier and I don't think that this and I did a little bit of calculation and research on it I don't think in this entire category um, was there uh, $5,000 worth of this product being sold in the whole category. So too little competition. So I'm going to say if there's not four pages of stuff, and by the time you get to five, I mean four pages, you want to start seeing random stuff that, you know, you want to see stuff like this that is not cupcake. Or, or icing and that you know so it means so you want to get into something that's a little different oh Charlotte asks what is BSR that's the best sellers rank uh, so Charlotte, Charlotte what happens is is when you sell a product for a certain period of time uh, when you go on there Amazon calculates by the hour at what level you're selling and as you sell more and more they start doing an average over a certain period of time now if you have a big day and you sell a bunch your BSR can go up but to keep you in a certain category, that's what they do with the consistent sales. And they can be able to track you and they kind of have that in their head and their calculation a little bit so that you're not having wild fluctuations. If all of a sudden one day you're this or you're that, they know that the last seven days you sold so many. So they're not going to drop you off the sky if you do that. So any other questions? Any other questions? Steve says, you're not too late. You can always get a replay and I got a bunch of fun stuff still to tell you. So uh, anything else? Anything else? Hello, anything else? I'll wait for a second because I know it takes a second to catch up. So let's actually look at my document. This over here. All right. So this is the products to avoid. So, and all of you, I will put up a link here in a minute of where you can get this. It may take me a second to get it. I don't know why I didn't pull that out of my links. but um, So, the products to avoid. Uh, there's 200 million products, guys. 200 million. I think there's more than that now. Um, a different, not different kinds, but different products that are listed. So we talked about these already. We talked about categories to avoid. We talked about that. And uh, again, you're eliminating the most risky products and categories. That's that. So here's some other things. We talked about, we talked about packaging and higher shipping a little bit. But also, if you've got multiple boxes. So if your product's three boxes, first of all, what happens when your product doesn't show up? You know what I'm saying? Like, so you send three of them and one doesn't show up. Well, all of a sudden, you've got a bad review, and, and we want to avoid bad reviews at all costs. So multiple boxes, multiple places, they can be picked wrong. 
It's just more complicated. You want to keep this simple again. You're paying twice as much, you know, for shipping unless they're putting them in the same box, which most of the time they do. Um, but multiple boxes inside your box is not good. And there's an opportunity for one or them not to be picked right. And that just gives you higher possibility that you get a return. And, you know, as we know, we don't want to do that. We missed a lot, Tony. All right, hold on. I'm going back to Maria. So how do you source products based on how many reviews? I was confused on this as far as staying below the 100 competition. Not sure how to find this. I do not understand too well. All right, Maria. I was just saying, looking at the reviews, and, and, and one of the things that you can multiply, if you see the number of reviews, you can multiply that times 95. So if it's sold, if it has 100 reviews, that means it's probably, unless they're doing what, what we're going to do is by working and getting more reviews and doing promotion, which is not, it's happening a lot, but you can typically say that 90, if the product's been on, if the product's been selling and you see some reviews, you can kind of get some numbers that, hey, they've sold this many numbers over time. Now, they're also, did I lose everybody? So somebody says it's not working. Hello? Oh, your screen's frozen. Let me fix that. Hey, does everybody see me? Everybody see me? All right, let's screen share again. How about that? Are we back up? You got to love technical stuff. If you're still frozen, it takes a second for you guys to catch up. You're, you're a couple seconds delayed. All right. Hello. I, it looks like I got good audio. We missed the last 10 minutes. All right. Well, let me go back up. I'll go back a couple of minutes. Um, I know it was recording. Sorry we're having technical difficulties tonight. Um, but basically, I just, again, went over the product categories to uh, avoid. We talked about that earlier. Um, collectible books. So first thing is, I'm going to write this down as we go. We want to avoid products that has unnecessary risk. We want to simplify this process as much as we can so that we can not get products that you have to do more things for. We want to find a simple product that is under one pound in a box that's eight by eight, the ideal size product under my strategy. Again, my strategy may not be the best strategy for you, but if you've not done anything, I try to go with a very conservative way in which we can uh, avoid things. So, I went back and we talked about packaging a little bit earlier, but let's talk about multiple boxes. Um, there's extra shipping charges to them. Um, then you also, there's storage fees. There's storage fees that go in um, that, that, that can cost you more at Amazon. And Amazon, by the way, you're going to have to maintain your inventory better because inventory, I think, is every six months. They just changed where they're going to go. Um, we may treat to go to GoWebinar. By the way, Go to webinar. I think it's, I don't know how expensive that is, Tony. Um, some of these are, guys, we are talking all over the world. We do have internet. And so internet sometimes doesn't do as well. It may be slower on your end. You may want to try closing any other programs that you may have open. And it could be on my end. I don't know. Um, it seemed to stay up for some people and not. Uh, fragile products. Guys, don't put yourself in a position where you're going to get glass products. If it breaks, don't buy it on your first deal. You shouldn't be looking at anything fragile. I don't look at it almost exclusively. I don't want fra I don't want stuff that can break. I don't want liquids. Reason you don't want liquids are what if they break and they leak everywhere and you ruin all of your products? What's the minimum amount of profit I would get to, Nicole? Uh, I want to see at least five dollars. If you're not making five dollars, and that's five dollars, all your shipping, every single thing. Once you get cleared and your FBA fees, all of it, you need to walk away with five dollars, or you don't have a product that is, you know, that is that you should be selling. You know, unless it's, I mean, because then you think you got to sell. I mean, to make a thousand dollars, you got to sell two hundred products. 
Well, that's 10 a day. I don't know. I don't know if you can get out and sell 10 a day on, on, on a lot of products right out of the gate. For sure, that's hard. So, you know, I would like you to see you making seven, eight, ten dollars. And uh, I got a product right now that I'm getting shipped to my door for 75 cents. So if it's 75 cents and it, it sells and retails for 11.95, and what I've done is is I've took and made a bundle out of it, and I put three of them, which brings me up to 19.95. So three in a bundle at 19.95. Look at how that one comes up, guys. That's nineteen ninety five. I've got two dollars, or you know, I've got seventy five cents. So two dollars and a quarter in the cost, and then another two bucks. I would think I'm just throwing that fifteen percent off of there. Fifteen is ten. So another, let's even call it two bucks. Call it five dollars, which I don't, it's not that high. Five dollars minus nineteen. That's a fourteen dollar and ninety five cent spread. That's crazy. You can make fourteen dollars on it. And if you're just getting it this way with with eleven ninety five product, I'm still making almost eight or nine dollars. Okay, now let me tell you this: I've already looked at this. You can right now go take this product and buy on Ally Express, and you can get it shipped to your door for a dollar fifteen. A dollar fifteen. You can have that that product at your door right now, and you can sell it for eleven ninety five. So people tell me all the time they can't find products on Ally Express. I'm telling you, they're out there. You just got to spend some time. And the competition was perfect. I love this product. So when I got into it and putting it together, I think it's it's a fabulous product. I'm making, you know, on a three, I'm making fifteen dollars on a product that cost my delivered to my door under three dollars. And you could have it delivered to your door at three forty five. So if you're out there and you're gonna start your first product, I suggest using Ally Express. Now it's owned by Alibaba. But when you buy an Ally Express, you're able to go in and you can pick a product and when you instantaneously know, you don't have to negotiate shipping, you don't have to negotiate everything. You could go on and look at this product and you could say, I want one of them. They'll ship one to your house and it tells you the price of what the one is. So it's not like you have to go figure out how much one is. You know what one costs. So you can order a sample. You can order 10 samples at a time. You can order 25. And what I suggest is that you get a product like that because if you're in the right number and you're trying to sell and you're making a five dollar profit that means you can find a one or two three dollar four dollar product do you give you get shipped here that's small and you buy a hundred pieces of it so you have a hundred and the great thing about aliexpress is is they're going to always ship it by air and there's probably some things i've never seen it but there's, i'm sure there's things on there that they don't ship by air but i don't think so because they it would be hard to quote it so you, you're going to get the product Usually you can get a product from there between five and seven days at max 10 and if it's the worst thing on earth It's gonna be 15 days. So that means that product can get to you and Here's the magic guys. There is zero risk in the money zero They have a hundred percent trade assurance because they they're the ones that process the credit card The credit card is not processed by the person in China selling it So if it's not processed by them if the thing shows up at your door, you're a hundred percent covered a hundred percent like you don't like the product you can ship it back you don't like the way it looks feels whatever you can send that product back it's kind of like Amazon but because these products are all made there they're cheaper and you know you're gonna have to search a little bit but what I'm telling you right now why get yourself into something that's that you have a bunch of risk in especially if you're under five thousand dollars if you're under five thousand dollars invest in your business i think it's crazy to try to get products out of china right now before you do it and once you get your product in and it starts selling then go spend the time to source the product you know you've got something that wins you've only spent five hundred six hundred dollars on getting your product on amazon so that means and then you've got three or four hundred dollars to spend on pay-per-click and promoting your product doing some giveaways getting some reviews and so with a thousand dollars, if you do this right, you can hundred percent guarantee that you're not going to lose your money or be scammed or anything, and then you can get yourself into a place where you're not risking everything, and and that's the problem I see over and over and over. So quit messing with China and Alibaba unless you know for sure you have a supplier that's been vetted. Uh, so here's my number: ten to twenty-five dollars. That's what I want you selling stuff for. If you're at ten dollars, your product needs to be under two to maybe three dollars. But I'm telling you guys, there's a lot of products that are selling that you can buy 
for two, three dollars that are selling for fourteen ninety five and sixteen ninety five. Um, I talked with somebody today and their product cost to get it shipped here is ten dollars and they get in their product they can get their product white labeled for ten dollars shipped here at a hundred at a time a hundred at a time shipped to their door with almost a hundred percent no problem getting it and not problem having your money be all risked and up at, 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 at for grabs and the product cost ten and they can sell it for $35, 30, 29.95. Guys, that's a huge. I mean, if you can start making $20 every single time you sell a product, imagine that, $20 every time you sell a product. You sell five products a day, you're making 100. That means you're making $3,000 a month profit. And then you add and you, what you do is is you add your next product then. Then you go to your next product. I want you to be making $1,000 a month. You should be focused on that one product until you get it to make $1,000 on any given month. As soon as you do that, so that means you're going to have to sell at least $2,500 to $3,000 a month of your product to be able to make it make sense before you quit focusing on it. Now, at some point, you can say, I'm going to run out of inventory, but you should be ready when you're selling 1000 to buy a lot bigger inventory, and you'll know that pretty quickly, and then you can start looking for other sources for it. But you should focus your time 100% on that product so you're not scanning and shooting bullets all over the place. Uh, Michelle asks, when you order an Ally Express, does it take way longer? No, it's quicker, Michelle. It's much quicker because they ship it by air. It's a sample. It'll be at your house five to seven days, just like it would if they ship it from Alibaba. But you, can act, you, don't even, you don't even have to contact them. You literally can go on their site. Fill out just like you're buying something on Amazon, and it tells you the guaranteed delivery date. If they don't deliver it by then, you don't pay for it. So, yes, you get on there, and you can order three of them, and only three of them. They don't have a choice. They have it listed on there. You can buy two, three, a hundred, whatever number you want. Uh, when I first did my sample on that, the Beauty Line product, I was you could get a hundred of them. So, I started out with a hundred, I gave away half of them. Um, so, that's the plan. Uh, you should give away part of them, get them for sale, do a sample, see if they sell. If they don't, you don't have any inventory. You probably made your money back. So worst case scenario, you've got these products, they're not selling, but you know you have the right price, you did everything. If you gotta burn them out, drop the price down to about what you got in it and liquidate the merchandise and go back and try another sample product. Um, I really would like you to be under 10,000 in their, in their in your parent category. So that means if you're in kitchen and dining, I'd like it to be under 10,000. Now, if you're miraculously able to get a product that sells on AliExpress, that's between 750 and 2,500, man, I don't even care if I ever, because if I got that product, it's moving, and I've used all the other parameters to get to it, you all of a sudden... Uh, all of a sudden, now you're making big money on a first product, and and there's definitely that possibility. When I get to the when I get to the listing, you don't want to have more than three power sellers on that listing. What that means is that three people are selling lots of product. Now, if you haven't learned how to do that, um, there's several pieces of software out there. I'm not going to go into it again tonight, but there are some products out there that you can kind of track sales. Um, Azon Shark, Rank Tracer, Terra Peak. Um, at the end of the day, these aren't accurate, but they're a great way to get some ideas um, that you can, here's the number it's doing. But that's not your, if, if you have 10 different things, there are 20 different things like that we're evaluating before we make a choice. We have just drilled this thing down by the time you use all my suggestions and all my strategy that you're going to be able to get yourself in a position where you're going to know that it has a proxy around itself. Most of these tools underestimate because I know people selling a product that has you know a BSR of you know 6500 and they're telling me what they're selling and none of these people have it right I would say most of them are underscoring or under the value which to me is good so if you use some of these products uh, Jungle Scout Amazon now Jungle Scout I'm still up in the air I love the Jungle Scout for the fact that it I can instantaneously look at some estimate of sales and if I can look at an estimate and I see that everybody is making some money, it's not going to be like it says a thousand and they're doing two hundred dollars. It's a it's a big guess, but it's a guess that you know has some education in the guess. It's a hypothesis of the of the actual number. So power sellers, you want to then go in and check and see how many people uh, are selling that product. So you want to avoid that category 
if you have 100 plus people in it and there's like six people that are selling tons and tons of products or eight or 10 people, you want to be able to get on that front page eventually and if the, the, the top 40 of them all are selling crazy amounts of money, then you, you know, you, you, it's going to be harder to get you in there your first time because if you don't have a lot of marketing money to be able to make your way up, man, I will, I will invest to me uh, up front. I will put 100% back in that product. I will sell it, turn around, do it again for the first 60 days while I'm launching. And then I'm doing product giveaways every week for the first 60 days. I'm going to continue to promote that product. I'm going to continue to do promotions on it. I'm going to do everything I can to get that organic number because the more money you spend and the more traffic you get just because you're selling from doing pay-per-click advertising, the faster you're going to move up. Now, that's not ideal for everybody, but you can still move up, but you just have to have a good strategy. And I hope my strategy will be able to help some of you. If you go into a product category and you're going to avoid it because there's a bunch of people with big brand name competitors all over the place. So there's a bunch of people that have brand names and they're dominating the first page. How are you ever going to compete with General Mills? Or how are you ever going to compete with Bissell? You know, um, how are you going to compete with, any, you know, the, the 40 lines if you're going to get in a vacuum cleaner business or even bags or belts? I mean, first of all, you only can sell to one kind of person. I don't like that. But if you're competing with name brand stuff, it's very, very hard. Uh, so if you don't want to see name brand stuff all over the place. Now, when I say, I, I didn't catch this a little bit, when I say power sellers, that means they're selling a lot of product, they have lots of reviews, and they've been selling it for a while. So you're going to want to get over and look at Camel, 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 and it'll give you a range of, you know, the, the amount of product sales over a time, and it's BSR over, you know, the last six months to a year. Um, so you can look at that. So you also, I think you should be a little, have a little bit of a niche to it. You know, so you should get products that are not sold at big box stores all of the time. You know what I mean? If you can find something that isn't featured in a big stop, it's ideal. That doesn't mean you can't sell something. We're just looking for as many. Now, you don't have to use every single one of these parameters, but if you can, man, you're getting much closer to what I call a product champion. Um, and all of these things in here doesn't mean you have to be right on it. It just means let's get a majority of them. Let's get seven out of ten of these things in our product. So that we know that, hey, listen, it's matching all these things. This one may not be as a big a deal. So I can do it because these other things are actually working. Uh, now, we talked about some of the things I think are evolving. And this is one of those things, when I was exclusively product oriented, which I'm, I've talked about tonight, I'm not as worried about, except for lots of name brands, except for a page that's too competitive. Outside of that, if I can find a product that's competitive, that has under 100 people, that has less than four pages, and by the time I get to page four or five, 40 or 50 percent of the products on there aren't even the product that I'm selling. If I see a lot of one-star reviews on page three, four, and five, and people aren't selling a bunch, and I know I can start out, there's no reason any one of you, you're, you're, you're not taking advantage of the fact that you should never, ever not be able to have 25 um, reviews in your first week. If you're not getting 25 reviews, you're not working very hard. And if you don't know how to do that, guess what? May the 5th, I'm going to do an entire webinar about nothing but how to get more reviews. Because, and that's, you know, that's a very important. So it'll be a complete webinar uh, month, or Tuesday, May the 5th. So this Amazon deal. So on the front page of Amazon, when you search your product, there's only 24 items. So to me, and Amazon is not always ranked number one, and I have made a call. I think Amazon and their culture and what they are, they are legitimate business people, which means they might buy products, but they're not going to do any extraordinary things to be able to take you out of the possibility you can sell your product because it would basically be making bad things happen to 40% of, of what they sell comes from people like us. So if Amazon is all of a sudden putting their product up and they're, and they're, they're ranked number five, and, and, and from my opinion, Amazon doesn't usually have the greatest, the greatest listings. Their listings sometimes have one product on them. They just are selling a whole bunch of them and it doesn't matter. So if you can come in and get multiple pictures and show multiple uses, uh, there's a product that I looked at and I talked about it in another webinar, which were these, uh, they were bento boxes, but they were like these plastic lid things that people could, 
you know, you'd put to go stuff in really, but I found some uses for them that when I called them a, uh, a meal prepper plan. So when you would maybe make meals for someone that is elderly and you make them 10 meals, you would use these and you could freeze them or you're on a diet. You could make your meals ahead of time and put them in there. So my deal is, so if Amazon's your, on your page, there's a likelihood that there's not low competition, not really low competition, because why would Amazon own a product that has not good competition? So I don't care as much anymore if Amazon's selling a product. Now, would I rather be a full of a bunch of people fulfilled by merchant? Yes. Are those out there? Man, they are so rare that if you ever get to what I call the magic product champion, you make a lot of money in your life, but they're just rare. It's like finding a big gold nugget and there's enough there's enough little gold nuggets that you can get in without, you know, before you have to make a decision. So Amazon on the front page, that means something's being sold. Their listing usually isn't that good. And there's still 23 other spots that you can get. Now, Amazon may lead you to a product that's too competitive just because, um, you know, people are already there and found it. But so I'm not as concerned anymore. I'm not saying it's the most ideal thing. But man, I think it maybe gives you more inventory. If somebody else has a different opinion, I can understand that, and maybe my evaluation of it isn't as much. So to me, if Amazon's on my page, there's only 23 other spots I can come take, and I don't care if Amazon's number one. I'll be number two, number five, I'll be number 20, and I'll still make money, a lot of money, um, if I'm on the front page, unless you're in a category that no one's selling anything. And that's why if you're gonna sell pipe bags for decorating cakes, I don't know that there's gonna be enough sales if you're number one to make any money. I think the top guy, when I looked earlier, if I estimated, I think he was making like $1,500 a month. And by the time he got to like number 10, they're making 400 or, and that's sales, I'm not profit. So let me go into the next one. And we talked about higher, when I talked about what I was gonna talk about, we talked about higher returns and product failures. Products that have power cords and batteries or lots of moving parts or pieces will have some failure rate or return. So if you're getting electrical products, there's some likelihood that they could break and the product not work. What if you get a product shipped from China and that product shipped from China and when it gets here, it doesn't work. There's some kind of manufacturer problem in it and all of a sudden now your product doesn't work. That could be disastrous to you when you're first starting out. You know, you, I mean, you can't handle that until you're at product number five and you could take a hit of $1,000 or $1,500. If you get a hit and you lose $1,500 because your electrical thing didn't work, then you know that doesn't mean you can't later on get into an electrical product. Some of you I know uh, are out there selling an electrical product, but ideally, I'm saying don't get yourself into electric products. Don't get yourself into battery-operated products. Don't get products that you gotta put a battery in because again, it's got, it's got electronic parts in it, electronic parts fail and you can't afford to have a box of badly made products. Um, if the product has lots of moving parts and pieces, if you gotta put it together and put a bunch of pieces, there's some likely that there's a lady in Minnesota who can't put together your product. So I suggest you want a product to be able to come out of a box and a 10-year-old or an eight-year-old can start using it. That the product and the way you use it's intuitive. That you know when it shows up out of the box that it is a product that anybody could figure out. Now, do you have to have a product like that? I say this for the third or fourth time, no. But if you wanna increase your odds, you wanna avoid these types of products. You wanna avoid products that will be returned or people can't put them together. Or what if parts and pieces of your product show up and they're missing? Well, now all of a sudden you got return and, and, and then you got failures and you got bad reviews. So. Electrical products, battery operated par products, people are products with a lot of moving parts. Difficult products for operation, I mean happy customers and returns. And replacement parts, now we talked about that. Again, if you're purchasing a product that's not made by the manufacturer, how many people have bought a product, got it home, and all of a sudden it doesn't fit the way that they say it should? So those, what is there, five things there? There are five things there that have higher returns. And higher returns and product failures, means no, 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 no.